So we're at the Samsung booth here at PixNow um, in Seattle, and we're here with Jay Kelby from Samsung. Uh, Jay, want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Jay Kelby. I'm the marketing manager for digital imaging for Samsung for the U.S. The NX1 won our gold award at DP Review, so we were really impressed by the product, especially because it just brought so much technology to the table. At the time, it was the largest backside illuminated sensor available um, in an APS-C sensor. Um, it had on-sensor phase detection that covered a large, large portion of the sensor. Not only that, it even had cross-type AF sensitivity, which really helps with um, low-contrast subjects, and, and it's a very, very technical, and very sort of niche thing. We haven't even seen cross-type on-sensor AF in any other camera um, so far. And there's 4K. There's just it's just a powerhouse of technology. So we're really happy to see that. But what I want to know is. Um, how, what was the philosophy going in? Because Samsung's not the first company you think of when you think of um, professional photo equipment, but the amount of technology we saw in the NX1 is just sheer, just really impressive. So what was the thought going into the making of this camera? Well, in the, in the camera market for decades, there's been this kind of incrementalism in terms of uh, feature addition. You know, a half stop here, a quarter stop there. Uh, there's not a technology reason uh, holding people back. So Samsung's a technology company. We have a ton of technology. The goal with the NX1 was to put every possible current technology into design what we could that we could. Um, we have, since we're a technology company in a bunch of cool areas like TVs, we rolled in H265 as the codec for 4K. And 4K is a priority for us in so many of our businesses, whether it's a phone, a TV, what have you. So it had to be a 4K camera. Uh, from an image sensor standpoint, we're the largest image sensor manufacturer in the world. Um, we, make, uh, we make a ton of backside illuminated sensors really for our phones and tablets and, and other devices. So we have that, that, that capability. And scaling to backside illuminated APS-C was, was a big priority for us, and we were able to do it. Um, one of the issues with the, the crazy uh, autofocus performance of this is to drive that, you really need a, a serious computing power in, in the platform. We, we designed our, our Drim 5 DSP so that it could drive the autofocus and all the autofocus sensors we have in, in here. Uh, we had the opportunity, since we're building a whole new platform with a new sensor, to, to, to roll all that technology in. Um, it has 802.11 AC in it. It has the fastest Wi-Fi of any camera made. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic platform. And instead of incrementally adding a little bit more than last year's cameras, we threw in all the latest core technology we could get from Samsung into this and, and drove it in some new directions, which, which, uh, which have made it uh, this, this really innovative platform. One thing I want to mention, actually, I'm glad you brought up the point of the, the processing computing power because uh, you're absolutely right that autofocus, I mean, it, when you're doing that sort of image analysis and subject tracking, because this camera can actually uh, lock onto a target and stick with it with uncanny precision, that's a lot of computational power needed. And so uh, it's great that you have that, that much power in there. And you can feel it when you pick up the camera. It's very, very snappy. You don't wait for anything to happen. Um, and uh, the other thing is, one thing we were really impressed by is the firmware updates. So there were a number of things that you added uh, via firmware. And just to see that the system is that flexible for you to make those changes just via firmware updates is really encouraging. Because it, I know we kind of imagine that one day you know, a lot of these are going to be open and people are going to be able to maybe even develop for it or just nimble in terms of making updates and changes. So. Um, Whatever this has been built on is it's amazing what you were able to do just by a by a firmware. It gives us, it gives us confidence that you'll be able to actually iterate on this product um, because the firmware updates were literally like generational gaps that we see in in other cameras, like from generation to generation. Like in terms of hardware, we saw happen in firmware. The, the, one of the, the coolest things about this platform, the Drim 5 DSP, is completely programmable. Uh, with that coupled with the the operating system we put in here, um, most Cameras run run an RTOS of some sort that's dedicated to the the, the DSP. The, the the main operating system in this is actually Tizen. Um, that gives us tremendous flexibility. It's a lockdown version of Tizen that we use, so we don't have a um, an external app download paradigm. But it means, from an R and D standpoint, we can be incredibly flexible. We can leverage code from all over Samsung, uh, and and very rapidly, as everyone's seen with the massive firmware updates and, and enhancements with this camera. Um, 
very quickly add add, add immense uh, value to the product in, in a matter of weeks or months, which is great. Very cool. Um, so actually, before we before we leave uh, the Samsung booth, I did see some really fun stuff around the corner. So can you show me what you have going on over there? Take take a look. So we've got this crazy looking device here, and I want to I want to ask Jay about it. So why don't you tell us about this? Sure. This this is the front end of our Project Beyond initiative. This is our what we're calling uh, the Beyond camera. It's actually 16 cameras. Yeah, it's on a quarter twenty. You can you you're, you're allowed to take it off as long as you swear not to drop it. Oh wait, there you go. Uh, it's got sixteen cameras set up in eight stereo pairs, and there's a camera on the top to to finish off the the bubble. So if you look at it, instead of just lining up a bunch of camera heads in a ring to build a VR bubble, this has stereo pairs. So this will create three D VR content. There's, an, there's a 17th camera on the top for filling in the top of the bubble. There's eight directional microphones in it, it's, and they're all aligned, so that as you're recording and capturing 3D VR content, you get aligned audio, you get stereo, or 3D optics. Um, it has integrated storage, integrated battery, and coupled with a, a, a decent computer on the back end, you can use this for live streaming of 3D VR content. So you could drop this on a stage between the drummer and the lead singer at a concert and stream the concert in 3D VR, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, you could flip it over, put it on a drone, and fly the drone to creating 3D VR content. And it'll, it'll record a gigapixel a second, which is pretty amazing, yeah. That's the interface port for all kinds of things. The memory module plugs into that. You could, uh, there's, there's other adapters too to go direct to a PC with it. We have a, an external battery for it as well that, that'll let you run it longer in the field. So each one of these is a stereo pair. So these two are looking the same way. So those are, those are the stereo pairs. And by doing stereo pairs, we get a much more immersive 3D capture an environment. <laughs> you can't have it yet. Yeah, that's, um, is there is there a um, uh, is there a release date for this yet, or what about in terms of like uh, viewing the content? Is that um, do you have a little virtual reality setup here as well? Yeah, so so uh, you can you can drive the content to a variety of VR platforms. You can drive it to a TV if you want. Drive it to a tablet and basically deal with a output a 4K window in one direction, so go right to a 4K TV. But in an immersive environment with, with 3D goggles is really what we're targeting. Um, so yeah, it, it works perfectly with Samsung's Gear VR, uh, virtual reality headsets. These are 4K, so what's the resolution to capture? The resolution to capture is, is actually full HD per input head. It builds into a 4K wall. Um, or an 8K full ring, so the resolution is pretty pretty spectacular. Um, yeah. No, is there anything? No, we're good. Uh, right now, this, this we're transitioning this from from R and D into uh, commercial production, so we'll have more to talk about with this in the in the coming months. All right. Well, I just want to thank you, Jay, um, for for uh, joining us and telling us about some of these cool features and congratulations again for the awards and we really look forward to seeing um, what comes next from Samsung.